God bless everybody. Welcome again to SoCo. Um, I want to do a very brief, I'm not Bob, talk about um, basically Christian persecution globally. I'm not going to include anywhere other than Nigeria for the moment because it's such a pressing concern that um, it's almost too much to take. So in Niger Nigeria is number 12 globally of the 50 top countries for Christian persecution. Um, just this month alone, a 22-year-old girl was raped, beaten and murdered inside a church. Uh, two pastors, one with an eight-month uh, pregnant wife, um, they were all killed, um, leaving eight children orphans. 69 Nigerian Christians were macheted to death. Um, so these acts are perpetrated uh, in the majority by ISWAP, um, which is an Islamic organisation and also Boko Haram, who you may have heard of uh, for the girls that were kidnapped uh, quite a few years ago now. Basically, I would like to ask people to recognise this with Black Lives Matter and all of the focus on the um, sanctity of black life, as I believe all life is uh, sacred as a Christian. We, there is neither Jew nor Gentile, as it were. I would like to um, ask you to check your consciences and see if you even know about it. I didn't always know about it, but the fact is that black Christian Nigerians are being chopped to death, set on fire, raped, put into mass graves. I have a photo that I wish I'd never seen, and I'm going to describe it, I'm so sorry. It's a three-year-old girl, visually, she looks three, on her knees with her head on the floor with a 10-inch blade hanging out of her skull and she was standing when she was stabbed to death because the blood is down her side. So I've seen open graves, I've seen charred bodies, um, I've heard accounts of rapes, murders, arson, um, intimidation, kidnapping and subsequent uh, beheadings. And I would like to say um, also that as a Christian I don't care who is persecuting Christians. I don't particularly focus on Islamic persecution of Christians, although unfortunately um, it is prevalent in certain Islamic countries. And that's not to say that North Korea is not the first and foremost for the last 18 years, uh, the top country for Christian persecution, and of course they're not an Islamic country. So I don't ascribe all Christian persecution to uh, Muslims, not at all. I desire that all people would come to God and receive salvation, and those who God calls will come to him, and therefore they may be at this present time Muslim. So to come back to my point, Men, women and children are being killed not because they're black, because they're being killed by other black Nigerian uh, Muslims. They are being killed for professing their faith and confessing Christ as Lord. And as the body of Christ, we are told that when one of us is injured, we, are, we all suffer. Um, the church in Nigeria is important um, to Christ as well as to, to the rest of the body, and I would urge you to look into it. Um, it's literally as easy as Googling Nigerian pastor killed, and you'll be sickened by the amount of results that come back immediately. And they're very often different uh, cases of murdered pastors. And the fact that it's uh, the um, shepherds, as it were, the pastors and the reverends who are being killed shows that they are a real threat to ISWOP and Boko Haram. I would like to urge you to please pray specifically for Christian Nigerians, to pray for the body of Christ in its entirety, but to focus on these people because generic prayers are fine, God already knows what we need, but I feel that if it's in your heart, it will be on your lips and you'll be able to spread this message because the mainstream media unfortunately decides that um, you know, other black lives or other non-Christian uh, murder victims are higher in importance. The day after the Christchurch massacre, which was absolutely horrific, I'm not, you know, denigrating that or, or making it lesser. The day after 200 Nigerian Christians were slaughtered at, simultaneously, basically, they, you know, it's just horrific. If you would only don't look at the pictures but if you've got a strong stomach have a look and I promise it will stay with you and the Lord will work on your heart to make you speak this topic and speak truth into it and know that it is happening it's not a case of police brutality there's no they're not criminals they're not being um, harangued or harassed because of the color of their skin even they just happen to be black lives who do not matter in the West and um, basically, I'm going to go on to Pakistan. That's an awful situation there. There are girls being kidnapped, forced into Islamic marriages, um, underage marriages, forced to take the shahada. I've got literal details of those. You can check my video with Jay Smith, also with Rob Christian. I'm doing another one soon with um, with people you will you will know and, and love, hopefully. So I don't want to go all serious. 
but it's really pressing on me. I've asked God to like step back, I've got the memo, but I go to sleep thinking of it and I wake up thinking of it and I can't pray any harder for those people who um, lose loved ones regularly. There's rays of hope, some people are released um, without being murdered, but it's a very slim number. And I just want to like impose on you again, open graves with charred, dismembered bodies. Small, little girls whose mothers have been raped and set on fire with knives hanging out of them. And this could be one of your nieces, you know, one of your sisters, one of, God forbid, your daughters. And um, just because they are in a different country, just it's not out of sight, out of mind. Um, if you're a Christian, Pray um, for discernment and for the ability to speak the truth uh, no matter the persecution and no matter the cost really because this persecution is happening to our brothers and sisters. If you are not Christian, question the narrative. Please question the narrative. Why does the mainstream want to withhold this information from you when black lives are so much in the uh, mainstream narrative as they potentially should be um, without the racism? But yeah, please look into it. Please look into the top 50 persecuted Christian countries. 4,000, I think, uh, 318 Christians were murdered the year before last. Um, and, and the numbers are only for the top 50. So that doesn't include the rapes, the forced um, conversions, the um, false imprisonment, the false charges. Pakistan has two people on death row at the moment um, for slandering the prophet in writing when they are both illiterate. They don't speak English and the message was in English. Look into them. Um, I think, you know, one of them potentially has learning difficulties. Christians in Pakistan also are persecuted. Um, Christians in Somalia, if there are any, are persecuted. In Sudan, in North Korea, as I said, the list is absolutely endless. And like I say, it's not only in Muslim countries. In India, there's a problem with Sikhs. In North Korea, there's a problem with atheism and godlessness and authority as it seems to be everywhere if it's not the authority of Christ. Again, I don't want to like put you on a downer. It's within your remit. Our first defense and our first form of attack is prayer. Ask, ask the Holy Spirit to open your eyes and show you what is going on to your brothers and sisters. If it was your blood brother or sister, you would be absolutely horrified beside yourself. And I actually am. So please, but I don't, another thing, I don't let it cause me anxiety because I cast my anxieties onto the Lord and I am thankful that I am not a Christian in those countries. That's not to say that I'm not a Christian with, with the reach to people who care, who are able to do something. If you have a job where you can publicize this, please do. If you have a social media presence, also please do. Don't get yourself banned from YouTube or Twitter or whatever the young people like to use these days. Just speak the truth and don't be afraid um, because why should you be? You've got salvation. All right, that's me done actually. Right, God bless. See you next time. Thank you. <laughs>